Have you ever been kicked in the gut and then been expected to actively participate in a team meeting? Of course not. That kind of multitasking, to be able to take a blow, fight through the pain, and keep enough wits about you is reserved for UFC fighters like Ronda Rousey, not a professional like you. However, this participating through physical pain is much more familiar to lonely workers than you may think. Naomi Eisenberger, Associate Professor of Social Psychology at UCLA and Director of the Social and Effective Neuroscience Laboratory, conducted an experiment where participants were put through an experience where they were excluded from a group. Being excluded pushes a person to the social perimeter, thus decreasing their sense of belonging and increasing feelings of loneliness. Upon experiencing the exclusion, the participant's brain actively registered on a brain scanner. They discovered that the part of the brain that was activated when being excluded was the same part of the brain that responds to physical pain. Eisenberger says, quote, the brain processes emotional and physical pain in similar ways. Because being connected is so important to us as a species, researchers think that the attachment system may have piggybacked onto the physical pain system over the course of our evolutionary history borrowing the pain signal to highlight when we are socially disconnected, end quote. This biological wiring motivates humans to avoid social disconnection in order to maintain close relationships. In our brains, the sensory fibers that register physical and emotional pain overlap. That means exclusion, disappointment, or loneliness are felt biologically the same as being physically hit. Exclusion, bereavement, or relationship troubles can be just as disruptive or distressing as physical ailments. How could anyone expect a workforce to show up fully to work when these ailments are occurring? Considering loneliness is a universal human condition, it's very likely that you or your team are experiencing loneliness and struggling to bring their full and capable selves to work right now. It's as if we're asking workers to fully focus on a task at hand or deliver delightful customer experiences without being physically or mentally assaulted by an invisible bully. It's not an exaggeration to say that disconnection is devastating workers and their organizations, silently incapacitating many and wreaking havoc on engagement, retention, and overall performance. Maybe the reason we've ignored addressing emotional needs at work for so long is because they've been hidden from view. If an employee arrived at work with a bleeding appendage, you wouldn't ignore the appendage and ask them to get to work. You'd address the injury and assess if they were fit for duty. The same level of concern and care should be applied to the social and emotional needs of the team. Eisenberg's research makes clear that our urge to connect is one of the most critical survival instincts. Much like our fight or flight instinct, we can't turn our social instincts off at work or conveniently compartmentalize them into the outside of work bucket. The human emotional need to be an accepted member of a group, otherwise known as belongingness, is such a strong survival instinct. It's important to address it at work because left unaddressed, our bodies will react as if we're alone and lost in the wilderness, surrounded by wolves. The hypervigilance that has embedded in our nervous system centuries ago to help us survive isolation will come roaring back hindering our ability to collaborate, innovate, and communicate among a team.